All right. Yo, how's it going, boys? Welcome back to a brand new video. And today, we're going to be doing a guide on a, on a requested hero. First time someone requested me to do a guide, and I'm doing it because, you know, first person, whatnot. So we're doing Dragon Knight, boys. This is possibly the one hero that I would say I don't need to make a guide on, but then I do. And the reason for that is because DK is very easy, right? It's the first hero you play. But the thing about DK is that this hero is easy, but it's hard to push him to the limits. Because the thing, the way how DK works, he's not like most heroes where he does a lot of shit ton of damage. And that's how you like kill people. You don't like really have any burst. You don't really have any much of anything. The only thing you have is like your body, right? Your tankiness. You have to abuse the fact that you're tanky and use your body to your advantage. So as you can see, the first step you gotta be good at DK is buy this sexy skin right here. And you have to have this because that's just the reasons. But anyways, we're gonna be looking into the skill sets and everything. And yeah, the skins are expensive, man. They are because the Dota. So basically, as a DK, so first thing first you gotta know about DK is that this hero is not, you don't pick DK last pick you rarely should be ever last picking dk and the reason for that is because this hero doesn't really counter anyone you know if you think about it like what does dk offer he's basically like an all-around uh small little nuke and stun and just tank like a little bit of everything the most common one is that he's good against hero with escape and right click damage so physical damage because he has a spell that reduces damage and he has armor so gives him high resistance he's bad against magic damage right but he's also good against heroes like storm because he can stun them for a long time and also um yeah that's about it but okay let's get into the skilling of the hero so yeah jesus your rape boys so here here's what you want to do when you play dk so what, what you want to do is uh when you go to lane it's actually okay to just pick dragon's blood you know a lot of the matchup is fine if you just pick dragon's blood because this gives you four hp and three armor essentially at level one you're not gonna die to anyone besides even huskar like you're just not gonna die because it's just too much hp regen and armor at level one but generally you don't need it because you have full HP, right? And if they don't hit you, which most people won't, because why the fuck would they be hitting a DK at level one when they're supposed to be hitting creeps? It's gonna be wasted. So what you wanna do is get your Q. And the reason why you get your Q is because this spell allows you to uh, essentially nuke down range creeps. It's actually a very fucking weak nuke at level one. It's only like that, right? It's actually less, it's like less than your attack damage almost. Wait, no, it's a little bit higher, but you get the idea. And if you hit the enemy heroes, uh, minus damage reduction, which is good. So what you want to do, this is ideal, right? So sometime at level one, you want to do this. You want to hit this creep like a couple times, nuke him. And then if the enemy hero is also in the way, you want to get him in that area as well. Because now, now most likely is going to go on their tower. This is like a little bit of a side trick. So... For the first wave, you can actually play like this, right? It might not work 100% of the time, but sometimes you can like push in the wave and tank it up. And it's okay because you're DK, so you're gonna regen it back up. So you hit the range creep, right? And then you push the first wave into their tower, and then you hit them with the uh, breath fire as the range creep dies. And now what's gonna happen is that either they have the tank creeps at level one, which they're gonna take a shit ton of damage for, or they're gonna go under tower and because of the damage reduction, most heroes has like zero damage. So they're just not going to be able to last it and you can deny everything. And they're going to miss creep hits on their tower. So that's like a small thing. Uh, level 2, what you want to do is basically always go um, Dragon's Blood. And the reason why you don't go stun is because this is a very strong skill. But the thing about uh, the stun is that Dragon Tail is that Dragon Tail doesn't actually... Um, how do I explain this? Do anything at all. Because you're not going to be ganking as a DK. 
People who come to your lane to gank are generally after level 5 or 6. And they gank when you're level 6 because right after the gank you want to push the tower with your ultimate. Because your ultimate does magic damage to towers and it's like a poison effect, right? And that's what makes DK strong at pushing. And also, once you get 2 points in, two or 3 points in Dragon's Blood, you can tank towers a little bit. And then go uh, go back and heal back up, right? Because you regen, you basically have infinite HP. And that's that. So, that's like a big thing for DK. But generally, uh, this is like your lane sustain. So once you get like 2 points in Dragon's Blood and you can uh, get your Breath Fire. Level 3 is kind of variable, like you could either go double Dragon's Blood if you're dying. Like let's say it's the Storm and he's nuking you a lot. Or some kind of hero with Magic Burst like Puck, they're nuking you a lot. Just go double Dragon's Blood and they can't really do shit to you. And also, yeah, you just don't care about creeps because you have way too much armor and regen. Level 3, most of the time I will get 1 point in Dragon's Tail just because it's way too good to not scale. But there are situations where I don't get it. Let's say I'm against uh, Lina, right? And I don't think that I can really kill her because I got no support to help me. Like, let's say I have like a support, uh, bound, like some support that does not gank, right? Like an Abaddon, right? Then I would not get the stun. I'll probably get more Dragon Blood either to tank it up or I'll just go jungle more efficiently with my nuke. But always get your ulti at level 6, always, and then try to max out your nuke because this is the thing that helps you flash farm. And you want to be getting this item around your soul ring timing, which I'll talk about later. But after that, just leave 1 point in Dragon's Tail, you don't really need to, like this skills horribly. The extra stun duration is not worth it at all. Max your passive, max your ulti whenever it is possible, and get your stun last. And then for the talent, is actually very unique. So. Generally, I feel like mana regen is unnecessary if you're gonna go soaring and wand. If you're gonna go soaring and wand, I feel like I never run out of mana. I just like always go uh, this. But let's say if they don't have too much right click damage, then I'll just go for mana regen. Because like, uh, you're running around ganking all the time with a blink dagger. You know, two mana is not bad, especially if they have like anti mage or lying or some kind of mana drain with the diffusal blade. It's nice. Because DK does have some mana issues, but like not really after Soaring and Wand. After that, you can go HP or you can go damage. I generally go damage because HP is just like too... It's kind of overkill, but 350 is a lot of HP, man. At level 15, 350 is like... You're just going to be straight up fucking unkillable. unkillable. Like don't underestimate the 350 HP, right? Uh, level of 20, I love going the cooldown reduction just because it's so good. 20 strength, you know, 20 strength is not something to be messed with actually because that's 20, that's on default, uh, what, 2 HP increase per strength or some shit? Like 20, no, 20 HP increase per strength, 20 damage, 20 everything, which is very nice. But because of the ultimate cooldown with the, how strong the Agnums is right now, I like to go for the cooldown reduction. 25, if you have the Quinn Reduction plus a stun, you can almost stun people infinitely with the Octarine Core and like a Quinn Reduction item. Otherwise, go uh, more Dragon's Blood. It used to be 2 times, now it's just 1.8. But yeah, this is still quite a lot, man. You're basically getting what? Like a free AC, dude. Yeah. So, level up to max. This is your item build. Quelling Blade, Double Gauntlet. Iron Branch, go Fairy Fire if you want. People are going to pull you Tangos. And then the first item you would want to get in lane, let's say, okay, this is situational. Generally, you want to go for a Soul Ring first item, right? Because this allows you to spam. But the thing about uh, spamming is that in the early game, you might not be able to sustain enough Dragon's Blood to use your Soul Ring. And this, uh, you actually have like, you can use this like three times if you space them out evenly. Oh, this is 49%? Jesus. But if you're having like an easy lane, then I'll say sometimes just going glove of his first item is, first item is fine. Because DK does have an attack speed problem, right? So you can get this and then you can farm in lane. And then your attack speed increases, so it's much easier to deny a last hit. Because guys, guess what? Like, surprise, surprise, DK does not win the lane by harassing. DK does not win the lane by doing anything. The only way he wins the lane 
is that he doesn't care if you harassed him. He doesn't spend money on regen. So he doesn't buy self, he doesn't buy tangos because he doesn't need it. And then what he does is that he wins the lane by out denying and out last hitting the opponent while the opponent is trying to harass him. So like, let's say the puck is hitting me, right? Or the storm or the Lina. I'm soaking up the damage as I'm last hitting and I'm denying everything because I'm going to give him damage reduction. And then once you gain a level advantage and gold advantage, you push your tower and then you push side lanes. That's where you play DK. You push his mid tower and you go to side lanes and you push. You don't really gank him. Uh, so after that, if you're having a super easy lane and you don't have a greedy carry, you can go Midas. Straight up, just rush Midas with no other items. And it's okay because you're going to have natural regen. But that generally, that's a little bit greedy for DK because he farms pretty slow. But yeah. After this, you can get a Bracer if you want. This is completely optional. If they have like a Storm or a Lina and you want to like not get killed, it, it, they do pack a little bit of a burst and get a Bracer. But let's say if they have a Huskar or OD or some hero that just leeches off you forever and you just can't get rid of them, then don't get Bracer. Just go Wand, right? But generally, I go Bracer if my matchup is okay. So this is the hard part, right? Now, going Radiance might sound good, but I feel that when I go Radiance on DK, it's way too fucking slow, and I almost always lose. The only time you can go Radiance is if you're going up against like a Broodmother and everyone's AFK farming. Or you're, you're up against some kind of Illusion Hero, and you guys have no way to deal with the Illusion Hero besides you. And your ulti does give you splash damage, so you know, this is kind of unnecessary. If you're winning really hard, and you don't need to buy a blink. Like let's say you already have two blink builders. Like a legion or someone else. You can just go SNY. This is just a good item all around. More HP regen. Faster movement speed. More tankiness. More damage. More more of everything basically. But most of the time I like to either go blink dagger or shadow blade. Because DK has a problem. He has a problem moving around right. Uh, Problem moving around. So. Basically what happens is that the problem moving around is that DK is very slow. If he gets ganked, he has no way to escape. So with Blink Dagger, the thing about Blink Dagger is that this is what you should want to do. You want to blink on a support, stun them, and then just kill them. And then your team can follow up. And this is a long stun, by the way. Yeah, it's stupid long. Uh, if you feel like you might get jumped on or if you just want to go on the back line, or if they have like a PA or Bristleback, you want to go with Silver Edge, you can go Shadow Blade. Never go Silver Edge second item, by the way. And then third item, it's almost okay to just go BKB. You can never go wrong with just building BKB. Like BKB is very good on DK. It's just like that one item that gives you what DK needs. Strength, which is damage and HP and more damage, which he lacks. And the active makes him unkillable because... You already know, DK doesn't die to physical damage, he only dies to magical, so once you press BKB, you're unkillable. And uh, what else is there? After that, you know, Aghanims is almost like my go-to item nowadays, because it's just so fucking good. Sometimes I go Axe before BKB. If they have a lot of like magic damage and not a lot of lockdown, I just go Aghanims. Because this gives you uh, magic resistance, guys. Uh, 40% I think or something like that. A stupid amount of magic resistance. So you're unkillable basically. You have a shit ton of magic res and a shit ton of physical res. And you're unkillable. After that, I like to go... If they have a lot of uh, right click damage like a PA and stuff, you can go Halberd. Never go Blade Mail. Blade Mail is super shit on DK. That bonus armor... Like your armor is so high that the bonus armor doesn't matter. If you didn't know... That the the DK, like the higher armor you have, the less that value armor gives you. So like let's say if Alchemist, Wraith King, or Axe bought the Blade Mail, it will be very beneficial because they have low armor, right? So every bit of armor they get is a lot. But with DK, he already has a shit ton of armor. The five, like six bonus armor isn't going to do shit to you. Evasion is much better than armor for DK, right? Uh, almost any hero like evasion is better at, like if it's, you're buying low amounts of armor um mkb if they have evasion but that's pretty situational i like to always go ac because ac is just like what dk needs 
More building push, more aura carry. You don't die. Gives you attack speed, gives you more armor. You know, you can't go wrong with AC. But it is, like, not efficient item, right? So, Satanic is nice if you just want to heal up. Uh, one item that I really like going is actually Abyssal Blade. And the only reason why I go Abyssal Blade, I always never go Mjolnir. Oh yeah, also you can go Drums if you're snowballing. The reason why I love going Abyssal Blade is because... The thing about Abyssal Blade is that... Think about this combo, right? You hit them. Oh, you stun, right? And then you're hitting them. And then you bash them. You Abyssal Blade them. And then your stun's off cooldown. Let's actually try this out. Look, look, look. Let's see if we can perma-stun this guy. So you're stunning him, right? Let's see if we bash. We bash. Abyssal Blade. Alright. Okay, we almost bashed. That was a little bit unlucky. Let me get some attack speed, right? So let's say I'm 6-slotted with the AC. And like, let's boost it up a little bit with the Moon Shards, right? Because realistically, yeah. By the time you're level uh, 25 with the Abyssal Blade, you're going to have these items as well, right? So you're going to pop him. Stun. Oh, wait, wait. I need to refresh. Let's see how long we can stun him for. A shit ton of time, for sure. Alright, if we bash him like a little bit more, it's basically perma-stun. Oh, I know why we didn't do it. Because we don't have Octarine Core, right? This was what I was going to next. If you have Octarine Core on DK, and if you get lucky, you get some shit like this, Spell Prism. Your ultimate is infinite now. Look at the cooldown on this thing. It's, it's 58.7 with your talent. And then with the fucking uh, Spell Prism and Octarine Core, you can fly forever. Your ultimate never goes away. Yeah, it actually just stays like this forever, which is insane. It's pretty insane. So, let's see. Uh, so, if you stun, stun him. So, if we bash. Abyssal Blade, stun again. Let's see if we can just stun an Abyssal Blade. It's literally a 4 second stun. Holy fuck. No, this is a permanent stun. Watch this. Yeah, this is actually a permanent stun. 4.85 seconds and 4 second cooldown. <laughs> you don't even need Abyssal Blade, guys. So, so this is basically how DK works, right? So if you can, so if you're level 30 with Octarine Core, Spell Prism, first of all, you can have infinite alt. But as soon as you catch anyone, unless if they have status res, you catch anyone with a stun, they're perma stun. They actually just can't get away until they die. Forever. How broken is that? Right? So yeah, that's DK in a nutshell. But yeah, it's pretty cool. What else about DK? Right, after you push mid, you want to go to the side lanes. Mm. Some timings are DK is to rush blink dagger and then gank with your team, right? You blink somewhere and then you and then you uh stun. And then you fight with your team, and then that's how you're gonna gank people. And you snowball off that. Essentially. But yeah. Fuck, I got something stuck in my teeth. Anyways, if you're wondering what that profile picture is, that's me, guys. Yeah, totally. So... Uh, what else was I gonna say? Right. So you're gonna try to aim to push the mid tower before the 10 minute mark. That's like the best timing. So every time if you have the chance, just hit the tower a couple times. Like you can just walk up and hit it sometimes. If you have your ulti, just, just go hit the tower like from a distance. Cause when you hit it the first time, when you hit the tower the first time, the poison is gonna burn like f uh, until for like 3 seconds. No, for 5 seconds. So every time you hit it, right? Per second for 5 seconds. So you're dealing 20 magic damage. And as you know, buildings have 0 magic resistance. 
So let's say you hit the tower once, it's gonna be 20 damage ticking for five seconds. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's a hundred damage to the tower every time you hit it, right? It refreshes itself, so you just have to hit it once, like walk around, get a last hit, and then hit it again. So that's like a tip. And then after you get mid tower, you wanna push out mid. And then once you have your ulti again, you you're gonna look to TP to a lane and then push that lane too. You wanna get all tier one towers as soon as possible. How are you talking about your mouth is not moving? Cause I'm built different, bro. But yeah, that's basically a DK guide, guys. I I'm pretty sure there's some more stuff, but this is only like a beginner's guide, as I mentioned. If there's anything you guys want to know more about DK, let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm feel free to ask me because I play DK a lot. Gold tier. He's actually one of my most played heroes and one of my favorite heroes. Just cause you know DK reasons. Yeah, he's actually I play him a shit ton. I have a pretty good win rate. So yeah, uh, hope you guys, uh, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the Twitch, check out the Discord, check out the Patreon, check out the anything and everything boys, have a very nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one, peace out.